think about your times when you've been frustrated or you're not sure about the skills or the attitude of someone, ask yourself, is the reason they're not performing one of these reasons? Because every one of these reasons here as a professional team builder and developer has a solution. Might not be able to get into all the solutions today, but I think the key here is recognize if you've got someone you work with, you don't have to be the owner to do this, you don't have to be the manager, you've got people you work with that you feel aren't performing, ask yourself, not what can I do to fix you? Where is it they're coming from of why? Because the why is what engages people. The why is their batteries. Okay, the how is how they charge them, how they blow them up, what they do when they're corroded, right, all that stuff. So, they don't know what you expect. Without clear defined job descriptions of expectations, how's anyone gonna perform and know what they should do because they don't know what you expect. It's pretty straightforward. They think that what they're doing is acceptable. If you put me in a seat, you put me in a position and I do it the way I know how to do it, there's no training, what's the answer here? Is feedback and training. Many of you don't do performance reviews and not doing a performance review doesn't mean you don't have to give people raises. A performance review and a raise are not together, okay? A performance review is how do we do a mutual meeting for you to self-assess yourself, for me to assess you and come together and close the gaps, okay? Then people know what's acceptable. And if they're, get, they're allowed, remember that which is rewarded, I'm gonna say it a different way, that which is rewarded and ignored gets better <laughs> or bigger. So sometimes people don't even know, like, wow, thank you for telling me. I didn't know you didn't like how I answered the phone. How would you like me to answer it? Simple stuff. But we're so busy, right? In dentistry, we're busy, busy, busy. We're behind. We've got a clock. We've got people, all these different things. We've got instruments. We've got rooms. We've got all these th different things to do. It's easy to look busy. It's not simple to look productive. Right? Okay. They think that what they're doing is not important. One of the worst titles in the dental team is floater. Yeah. Some of you hire people go, you're just the floater. <laughs> or you're just the hygiene slave or assistant. <laughs> right? So do titles mean everything? No. However, if I don't think of what I'm doing as having any importance here, am I going to live my unique ability with my talents and like what I'm doing? No. So that's the word here for your solution is you've got to have a purpose. The purpose is why do we exist as a dental practice? They've got to know the purpose and you constantly go back to why are we here? Why are we here? We're here to service patients with the best dentistry has to offer. I, I'm not going to write your purpose statements for you because they're unique and individual. However, if they don't think what they're doing is important, they won't excel. So sometimes it's just acknowledging. Letting them know, great job. When's the last time you looked to your colleague that you spend 60% of your waking hours with and just said, great job? called bucket fillers. The number one reason for turnover in a dental team is lack of appreciation, it's not money. Well, I can tell you, if you're expecting the leader to jump out of bed, bang their chest and say, I can't wait to tell 14 people I pay, they're great today, it's not gonna happen. We've tried everything for 20 years. We've said, put 10 dimes in your left pocket, doctor, and every time you give a compliment, put it in your right. We have tried every way to Sunday. This isn't really gender. A lot of times men get bad rap for never telling women how great they are, <laughs> unless they want something. <laughs> okay? I, I, don't, I don't see that as true. It's not a gender thing. But where can we get our appreciation from so we don't depend on one bird to come in and say how great you are from each other? Lack of appreciation is lack of feeling like what I'm doing has any value or importance and I'm just going to be, that's when I say we hire live trees and sometimes make them dead wood. 
because of the way we, we handle it. Uh, they don't know how to do it. This is a skills issue. It's tough for an adult to admit I don't know how to do it. But Lori and I talk about this a lot uh, in the coaching world, is people need to know the what is it they do, the why is it important, and then how do I do it? And how you do it is your playbook. It's your system, right? So I come in, I go, so how do you do new patients here? We don't. <laughs> or we just, what do you mean, how do we do it? We hope they call, we give them a clipboard, and they have an exam. You gotta know your playbook. And your playbook are your systems. Because in that is the how you do something. It's a big deal to get a playbook written for a practice because it's a lot of uh, energy that goes into it. Can I tell you, you don't take the protocol manual, hand it out to an adult and expect them just to follow it with no support. It doesn't happen. It's not the military. Even is not possible. Pardon? Even it is not possible in the military too. Well, you know, my son's in the army, and I'll tell you, it's like he had a lobotomy from when he lived with me. I said, you're going to the army? You can't follow three rules here. He says, Mom, you follow the rules, they're all in writing, and there's serious consequences when you don't follow them. We can't run the workplace like that. We've got multiple generations, different things happening. It just doesn't, it's, it doesn't make people feel better in the process, but he didn't, they don't, the army doesn't, the army says, you're not coming here to feel good. You're coming here to act responsibly with a code of ethics and honor of obey, listen, right, a lot of different things. That is, you know what, probably dental practices from my mature dentist back in the traditionalist days because they had employees that were traditionals that showed up with their clipboard and said, we're here to what? Obey the owner. They actually had respect for their boss. And they, they would do things without question. Right, that's your, your traditional is born before 1945 for the most part. Okay, um, why else? They don't have the, so the how is that the systems, how do we do it? They don't have the resources, right? So you can say, you know what, set us up a website. And I can say, well, what's the budget? You go zero. <laughs> well, what resources do I have? Don't know, okay? Really want you to be better at block scheduling. Okay, well, here's how it's done, but what support am I gonna have from the team to do block scheduling? None. Resources are just what are other things, right? So in case presentation, we really want you to do a better job explaining the treatment to a patient. Well, what visuals and models do I have? None. Well, how can I do that to the best of my ability if I don't know, I don't have the resources. So before you look at doing something, you gotta say what is the what, the why, the how, and what resources do we need? Okay, a resource, we, we're a resource company, right? People look out to us and go, do you have an article on the 10 moments of truth of a new patient? We sure do, okay? That's a resource to bring into a how then the team works on why do we want to do it this way and what's in it for us? See how it all works? It takes time, it takes time and energy and a little bit of investment sometimes. Not everything has to cost all kinds of money, but it does cost. Time and energy is money in dentistry, especially when the dentist is doing things that other people can do. One of your biggest blocks in a dental practice is we want a dentist to do what? What only a dentist can do. And what is it only a dentist can do, gang, on a daily basis? Diagnose and treatment plan. And deliver the procedure. So if you think of, if you were to look at those are the three things only a dentist could do, look at what percentage of your day you're doing that. And if it's less than 80%, you're acting busy, but we're not productive. Okay, you want people to do what only they can do as their first primary uh, action, and then the other stuff happens around it, okay? Um, they're being prevented by others. What I mean by this 
is whether it's real or not real, anyone on your team or you that uses the word you before all of your statements is looking outward to blame other people for our lack of progress and blame doesn't get us forward. Okay, they, being prevented by others could be these two ladies won't talk to me. I'm brand new here. You told me I have to learn from them. They, they're not, I, I have no time. I mean, you're going to hear all kinds of other things. I just want you to hear this. They're being prevented by others could be a blame mode because they're afraid to tell you they don't know how. <coughs> or it could be real. Because when you take a team that's all the same, you bring a new person on board if they're a lot different, it's called polarization. That's another block to progress on a team. Polarization is there's six people like this and there's one of me. Okay, I feel polarized, meaning individual. That's why you want to have a diversity of people you attract into the workplace that have different talents and different passions. Um, they're not suited for the job. Sometimes it just is what it is. They're just not suited. You know, I tell dental teams every day, if you don't like people, could you give us all a break and call a career counselor and move to another stage of happiness? Why do I say that so directly? If you don't like people, this is not the profession for you. I'm telling you, we've worked with a lot of people in the dental team that go, I see dumb people everywhere, I hate people, they're so annoying, the patients are demanding, the team is so stupid. I say you might want to call a career counselor to facilitate you into a role you're better suited for with your talents and your passion because if you don't love people, you don't even like them, dentistry will wear you out. Would you agree? Yeah. It will just suck your energy dry by 10 a.m. You'll be doing the 10 a.m. dental prayer <laughs> because people are people. It's a people business. Um, they think they have nothing to lose. <laughs> Unproductive, negative behavior unaddressed causes a big mountain of negative stress. Right? So they, if there's no consequences, if there's no one that's going to speak to when I do something that's inappropriate based on the boundaries we've set for our behavior here, right? So I'm trying to think of an example to give you. Oh, there was an administrator that took it upon herself when the doctor went on vacation um, to just, she's sick and tired of working all these lists of patients and just deleted everyone who hadn't been there in two years. I know, all of you are gone. You'd say, that would be a career-ending move. But here's the thing. As I double-clicked into the big drama, because guess who gets the drama? OMG calls. <laughs> the coach, the consultant, especially if we're working with them. We, don't, we sometimes get it when we're not, because they don't know who else to call, because it's a big deal. I said, so tell me how this happened. Well, what happened is before the leader and the team, management team went on vacation, they said, we need you to spend time, come in every day while we're gone and clean up our files. Okay. Great. You know what? There's someone that might say, let's put Windex on them. There's 500 words that have multiple meanings. So that as a person delegating and directing others, you need to be specific and they need to feed back to you what you meant by that. Otherwise, you're going to have a gap of misunderstanding. She was devastated. She went, what's the big deal? We've got all our patients in the last two years. We've got a clean dentrix system. Like, we're rocking and rolling. We've got 2,158. We're real happy. What's the problem? Well, you deleted them. It means gone forever. And there's laws that we have to keep that for seven years. Like, you can just imagine by your facial expressions. She had no idea. I said, how could she have known if all you do is wrote a post-it note that says, while we're gone, please come in and clean up the files? So it goes what? Sometimes both ways. 
And if they didn't know that was unacceptable, they would just keep doing it. She was so excited for them to come back for vacation, did a huge presentation on her success. I'm like, oh, there's a disconnect. 